Welcome to the J-Boy Show, hosted by Jake Crane, the fastest growing sports show in the nation. I'm Coach Hugh Freeze. This is Super Bowl champion Brandon Graham. Hey, this is DJ Shockley, and you're watching. And you're watching. And thanks for watching the J-Boy Show. All right, hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us on an extra special edition of the J-Boy Show. We're breaking a little barrier here. Uh, can't wait to introduce our next guest, uh, one of the best young coaches in the game, just took a huge job. I'm going to get to that in a second, but before I do, I want to give a shout-out to our partners at betonline.ag. Head over there today. The online casino is always open. Got March Madness still going on. Whether you like parlays, props, however you roll, head over to betonline.ag today and tell them that J-Boy sent you. Uh, but again, like I alluded to earlier, very excited to bring on a guy that, that's cut his teeth. Uh, you're going to know the name when I say it. Uh, very excited to get him on here, uh, joining the SEC, which we know is the King Conference of College Football. And that's new South Carolina head football coach, Shane Beamer. Coach, what is up? Not much. Appreciate you uh, having me on. Great to be with you and looking forward to it. Definitely, man. Well, you know, I want to start. Uh, you're a guy that grew up in a football family, I'm the same way. Uh, we probably did a lot of the same stuff growing up. I was sat in front of a TV and explained what the power and counter was and all that stuff before I was age of 12. My rec league coaches probably didn't like that, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. And before we get into South Carolina, can you just talk about uh, just the influence that, that your father had? Who You know, we hear about Beamer ball and all this stuff, but the thing I think that, that rings out the truest is the way he treated his players, the way he treated the community, uh, and at the end of the day, we all know touchdowns are great, tackles are great, interceptions are great, but you're affecting people's lives. And, and I know some of that has rubbed off on you. And you're your own man. You're your own coach, just like I'm my own man. Uh, but, but I'm not afraid to admit who my father was and the impact he had on me. Just now in your coaching style, what little parts did you take from your father? I think you hit on some of them. Uh, one, how you treated people. Uh, you know, you know, from being around this profession and my, yeah. you know, my sophomore, sophomore year in high school, Virginia Tech won two games. And that was his sixth season as the head coach. Mm -hmm. and from that point forward, they had the bowl streak and, and played for a national championship. He went in the College Football Hall of Fame. And the thing that I took from that is he never changed. Like the way yeah. that he treated people when they were not winning games to when he was going in the Hall of Fame, he always treated people right, the players, the people in the building, the people in the community. Uh, and then just the opportunity to see how uh, being a coach can impact young people and, and the, the impact he had on guys' lives uh, and the way he was able to change guys and maybe guys that were going down the wrong path that he was able to steer towards the right path and, and the way their lives turned out. So that was, you know, outside of the X's and O's and the winning and losing games, that's really the thing that I took from him. Yeah, I, that's exactly right. And, and again, we all know what really matters in life. But coach, you, uh, you know, you've been to different spots, took a little bit everywhere where you've been, had a ton of success. You were at South Carolina, obviously, earlier when, you know, they were winning 10, 11 games. So you know the formula. But, man, how excited were you? And what was it about South Carolina that stood out to you that when you had a chance to accept this job? And we all know it's in the SEC and how competitive it is and, and you know, the hours that go into that and, and the time that you have to spend. But what jumped out at you? Because I know there's a ton of positivity in Columbia. I got a bunch of buddies in the coaching profession that are like, listen, Shane ain't messing around up here. These guys are going to be back sooner than later. And what is it about South Carolina that stands out to you? Because it's a beautiful place. When I was coaching at South Alabama, man, we came up there on the road, uh, you know, met Coach Spurrier at the, the middle of the field. But, man, the towels before the game, the way that stadium's rocking, the beautiful campus, man, there's a lot to sell. But what stands out to you about South Carolina? Man, there's so much. I can't name just one. <laughs> um, you know, like, I, I grew up, my dad was the head coach at Murray State. Uh, out in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, the racers, baby. The racers. So one of the very first away games that I ever went to, it may have been the first, but one of the very first away games that I went to when he became the head coach at South, uh, head coach at Virginia Tech was Virginia Tech played down here in Columbia uh, at South Carolina. And I can just remember walking in that stadium and it was like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> this isn't Murray State versus Austin <laughs> this is the big time. Yeah. And, uh, that just always stayed with me. Uh, and then just that from having the chance, I was born in this state. I was born in Charleston. My dad was coaching at the Citadel. So I've always loved this state. Uh, my family and I come to the beach here every year, um, the people, and then just from a football standpoint, we were here for four years, like you said, 2007, eight, nine, and 10. And it's a fantastic place to live. 
Uh, it's a fantastic place to raise a family close to the beach or close to the mountains. But then just from a football aspect of it, you got everything you need. I mean, I'm sitting here doing this interview in a, in a football facility that's less than three years old. That's as good as anywhere in the country. I mean, it's amazing. And I look right outside my office window at, at what I consider the greatest home field advantage in all of college football in williams Bryce Stadium, like you said. And then it's just, you got a recruiting base. You got so many players around you, uh, not just in South Carolina, but the surrounding area in this region. A uh, fantastic place to go to school. It's a great education and, and a rabid, rabid fan base. It's loyal and passionate and, and loves uh, loves Carolina football. And, and Columbia is a great city, capital of South Carolina. It's just a, a place that my wife and I, we absolutely loved living here when we were here before and have been eager to get back and so thankful for the opportunity to be here in this role now. Yeah, it is. It's an unbelievable place, you know, especially going up there and seeing it and, and the rabid fan base. We know how passionate people are about South Carolina football and you hit on recruiting. You're a guy that's been a recruiting coordinator and that state produces so much talent. I think it's a really underrated state when you look uh, in the United States at how much high school talent you can go down the list from Rock Hill from one end all the way to the other. How important is it for you? And we all know recruiting is the lifeblood of this whole deal. Typically, the teams with the best players that are the most disciplined win the most games. How important is it for you to be able to go in there and listen, we know about Clemson and all that other stuff, but you know, being the state school, being able to go in there and build a fence around the state and go other places as well. We all know what Huddle's done for recruiting. You can recruit nationally now, but going in, this being your first year and setting that precedent of, hey, listen, at the end of the day, we're trying to turn the best players in South Carolina in the Gamecocks. And if we can do that, we can win a whole hell of a lot of games. Yeah, no, that's huge. It's it's what we one of the things we did before. I mean, we were we were able to keep the best players in South Carolina at home. And you're right, it is an underrated state. I mean, we signed some great players when I was here before, but then we had like a Robert Quinn left the state yeah. of North Carolina. Uh, AJ Green came out the same year that Robert Quinn did and went to Georgia. Uh, but we were able to keep guys like DJ Swearinger and Stephon Gilmore and Alshon Jeffrey and Jadavion <laughs> Clowney. Uh, at home, like here in South Carolina, when they could have gone anywhere in the country and they decided to stay right here and play for the University of South Carolina. So it's got to start in this state, first and foremost. We are a small state population wise. We're not going to have the number of power five scholarship guys each year that a Texas or a Georgia will, but we certainly got to uh, do our part to keep the best players at South Carolina home. And, and Jordan Birch, is, who's on our team right now, Jordan came out a year ago and, and I was listening to an interview he did the other day and he could have gone anywhere in the country. I mean, we recruited him in Oklahoma, Lincoln and Riley, Lincoln and Riley and I came to his school. Uh, every other head coach in America passed through his school and they asked him, why did you stay at South Carolina when you could have gone anywhere in the country? And he said, well, I'm close with my family and why did I need to leave? I had everything that I needed right here at home. And uh, he's exactly right. So we've got to start here, but then we're surrounded by so many great states like Georgia and, and North Carolina bordering us, Florida below, and then being able to get into places like Virginia and, and other surrounding areas will be huge for us from a recruiting standpoint going forward. Yeah, definitely. And, and again, being able to, and I always talk about this too, coach, and I don't think it gets talked about enough. All we hear in the NFL is about this free agents going here and this roster changes here and this GM is here. Roster structure outside of recruiting, in my opinion, is one of the most important things you can do as a head coach. I think it's one of the most important jobs. And just for a second, can you talk about, you know, being able to inherit a roster to find your personnel adjust to that personnel and how important it is to have a roster structure where two, three, four years down the road, you're not losing too much at one time on one side of the ball, especially up front. We know how important that is and just the importance of roster structure in general and how that is something that a head coach has to be able to nail down as quickly as possible because it's not easy. No, it's not. And it's, it's tougher than it's ever been now yeah. with transfer portal and, and everything else that's going on just because it's, you're not able to just, as you know, it's not like if, if a guy just walks in my office and decides to transfer, then I'm just immediately allowed to replace his scholarship yeah. with another guy. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, so it's tough from that standpoint. And, and you can't just be thinking about this year. You've got to be thinking about years in advance. And this guy may have the opportunity to leave this program, leave early for the NFL. Uh, you know, this guy right here is going to be a senior. It's different this year because all these guys, and I agree with it, got – an extra year because of COVID. So you've got guys on your team that really are seniors last year that came back this year. You've got guys on your team that are seniors now, but have another year because of COVID and, and trying to balance that. Are they, are they coming back for another year? Are they not? And, and it's, it's, it's critically important. It's not just, uh, 
the recruiting class that you're working on right now, it's, it's thinking years in advance. So you don't get yourself caught in a situation where your numbers aren't where they need them to be, yeah. aren't where you need them to be. Yeah, that's that's 100 percent correct. And coach, before we get to spring practice, I know you guys are ripping and roaring right now. Uh, like I said, I appreciate you taking some time. I know how those dog days of spring are and you're brand new, having to evaluate, find out who we can trust, uh, who can really do it, who's physically ready. Those are all things you got to hit on the checklist. But I want to talk about culture and foundation because, you know, a lot of people and, and fans and the casual fan will say, OK, well, you know, the most important thing this year is, is well, we need to go eight and four or we need to go nine and three. But coming in, in in a new regime and taking over and putting your culture in place, what is the biggest thing year one from a culture standpoint that you want your guys to hammer home? We all know about playing hard and stuff like that because this, this team will build the foundation for that team two, three, four, five years down the road. And you'll always look back. and Because, again, the old saying is you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And that's true as hell, especially in this instance. Yeah, just that. I mean, we uh... – I've told the guys that are coming back that, you know, I'm not looking at this as like some sort of like rebuilding mode where 2021 is, is a wash. I mean, that's yeah. not the guys that came back uh, for their senior season when they didn't have to. So we're trying to be ultimately, and I know it's cliche, but it's true. We're trying to be the very, very best football team we can be. Let's maximize the true. Potential of every individual in this team. Let's maximize the potential of every position group in this entire team and be the very, very best we can be. And in the process, um, laying that mentality, establishing that mentality, not just in the season, but what we're trying to do right now, the way that we practice, the physicality that we practice with each day, the mentality that we practice with each day, being able to sustain it throughout a practice and throughout four quarters in a game, uh, the effort that we want to play with, the competitive spirit that we want to play with. You know, we've got to do do all of that, the way we take care of ourselves and handle our business off the field as well, being accountable and dependable in everything that we do. And as you just, in my opinion, as you just do those day in, day out, that ultimately will lead to wins on the football field, which is ultimately what we're judged on and what we're about here. Yeah, exactly. And if people say the grind, there's different terms, the process, but it's amazing how you live your life off the field translates to on the field are you going to class on time are you being respectful to people in the community are you going in there and not skipping a rep because we all know the best teams are the ones that police themselves and at the end of the day that's the goal and coach I know like I said you guys are in the middle of spring practice uh, right now you guys have kind of ramped it up a little bit how excited are you and how has been uh you know the the days that you've gone and and really how do you feel right now at the stage you are in from what you have seen so far I'm excited today as we do this interview today was our first day in full pads. Yep. Uh, so it was great to be able to get out on the field and actually play football. I mean, you can, <laughs> you can do in helmets and shorts and, true. and Jersey. So it was actually great to be able to get out there and, and, and practice physical and play football. I uh, love the energy that our guys are competing with. Love the mentality that we're practicing with. These guys are hungry. They want to do well. They want to be successful. And, uh, you know, the effort hasn't been a problem at all. Obviously, we're installing new schemes offensively, defensively, and special teams right now. So uh, doing a good job of that from an installation standpoint and making sure that we're learning what we're supposed to be doing and then perfecting the techniques and, and, and assignments and everything that we're trying to get done. And uh, But so far, so good. I mean, it's been a typical uh, first three days, but probably a little bit better than I expected yeah. in regards to the efficiency and the organization of practice and and uh, what we're getting done in a short period of time. Yeah, it's amazing what you find out when the full pads come on. You can really find out who wants to stick their face in it, who wants to get a little physical, who's a little nasty, which again, you got to take care of your teammates. I'm not talking about taking guys out in seven on seven, but really seeing who up front wants to take that extra step because you'd rather say woe than go. And speaking about go, you need to go to ebay.com slash sneakers today. Go ahead and copy you a pair, whether they're vintage, new, whatever. Air Force Ones, Jordan, however you roll, go to ebay.com slash sneakers today. they got a team full of authenticators. It's going to be exactly what you ordered, exactly when you wanted it. We're here with head coach Shane Beamer. Yeah, let me say that again. We're here with South Carolina head football coach Shane Beamer. Uh, pumped to have him here. A guy that I'm really excited to do his thing. Watch his staff. You guys put a heck of a staff together, and I know everybody's excited. Uh, and, and coach, you know, speaking about that, when you guys, you know, take the field offensively, and I'm not asking for formations or personnel or anything like that. I'm not trying to give out any tendencies early, man. You, you know, they're going to check that week five. But what can South Carolina fans expect uh, offensively from you guys, especially, you know, with your mindset, what you were, you were, you know, grew up in, 
where you've been, the little bit you've taken. I know they're going to be able to expect a fun style of ball, but physical as well. So can you give me as much as you can? Like I said, no special sauce here. This isn't Zaxby's. Just asking for, you know, what can the fans expect in Columbia this year on offense? You know, we want to be multiple first and foremost. It was important for me to hire yeah. the staff that we could run a system that had flexibility to, to do what we're good at. And, you know, hired Marcus Satterfield from the Carolina Panthers. He had been with uh, Joe Brady and the Panthers this past season, being able to learn that offense and, and, and implement that offense along with what we did at Oklahoma, uh, yeah. which I'd be crazy to not take <laughs> as well. And then we got a great offensive staff of guys that have been around different systems and, and marrying it. And it was important to me to have a have a system that can adapt. And at the end of the day, you know this, like it's all about getting the ball to your best players. It's true. It's matchups. Lining them up formation wise, personnel wise, and then the plays, the X's and O's, the schemes that you're running, get the ball to your playmakers and get the ball to them in space and let them go make plays. And, and being, being, having the ability to run and pass, does that mean we're going to be 50, 50? No, but we got to be able to run it when we got to run it. We got to be able to throw it when we got to throw it. And, yeah. That we'll be able to do that and excited to learn about the personnel we have on this team and 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 being able to put this 2021 South Carolina uh, offense together and as you know in in this league you better be able to run the football and you better be able yeah. to run. and uh, we've got uh, excited about our offensive line and our return to running backs and, and our ability to do that yeah and, and coach as we're winding down here every time and, and we both got buddies we know the coaching profession is really a small world at the end of the day but every time I ask somebody about you they say the guy just gets it and I'm not saying that because you're on here, but but the guy understands it. And we hear, you know, this head coach has a CEO style or, or this coach, you know, kind of has his hand in everything. And to me, that the best head coaches kind of have a balance of it. How would you describe? And again, I know it's it's early, man. And, and you know, you just got there, but you know, you have a style and, and, and you know how you want to do it. You don't go in there without a plan. But how would you describe yourself as a head coach? Because I know you trust the guys that you hired, but also at the end of the day, you're the guy they're going to look to. Uh, at the end of the day on the scoreboard. Yeah, it's funny. I was, I'm still trying to like learn you know, <laughs> what this balance is for me. Yeah, yeah. We had our pro day here yesterday and I was talking to a former head coach in the NFL and he's like, my only question for you is like, where did you go your first practice? Like, what did you, <laughs> what did you do? Cause you used to be in a, with a position and yeah. he asked me that question. I'm like, you know, I thought about that and then it, 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 it figured it out. But, but uh, I learned from my dad to hire good coaches and let them do their jobs. And yes. I'm, I've, I'm fortunate that I've been a special teams coordinator. I've coached defense in the SEC. I've coached offense for the last however many years, 10 years of my career. So I've got experience in all three phases. And, and I'm not in there telling all three coordinators what to do, but I do want to be involved in all three phases and I will be. But, you know, since I've gotten the job here, I think the biggest thing with me has just been uh, recruiting, uh, yeah being involved in the community, getting around the players in this building and investing in them and developing relationships with those guys. That's where I've spent my time. So I don't want to be called a CEO head coach because I like to think I'm a little bit more of a football coach. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Um, but I also understand the importance of the chair that I'm in, uh, the roles and the expectations and the responsibilities that come with it. And I'll certainly be involved on the field and on the practice field. I'm bouncing around all over the place and, and I want to be down there with the offensive line and defensive line. I want to be over there with the tight ends and the kickers and the punters and, and everybody. So I think I've, I've tried to do a good job on the practice field of bouncing around and being involved with everything. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And I know you're an energetic guy and, and being able, I'm sure it's probably interesting, man, just thinking about it, being the head coach, you know, kind of walking around and, and being able to have your hand in everything. I bet it's, you know, pretty cool, but you know, who are a few guys coach? And I know that, that y'all just started in pads. Are there a few guys that, you know, ha have stepped up or, uh, you know, that, that you feel like, you know, kind of sh shined a little light today or, or maybe a few, maybe a guy that came out of nowhere, just if you could name just a couple that maybe kind of either surprised you or you kind of maybe saw it coming and you're expecting a lot out of this fall. Yeah, I think it's still early with today being the first yeah. day in pads. I mean, a lot of guys have flashed. I'm excited. You know, we've got a receiving group that uh, lost – South Carolina's leading receiver off last year's team, Shaw Smith, is gone. Yep. And we've got a bunch of guys that are competing at that wide receiver position to figure out who's going to be in that rotation for us. And, and I'm excited about that group in general, the way that some of those guys have, uh, have uh, uh, stepped up. Uh, that's exciting. All of our offensive line returns, except for that's one. That's huge. Star, that's huge. All those guys back. They've taken another step. And then some guys that – you know, weren't prominent players on the offensive line last year that have had three really good practices. And, and I'm eager to see as we go from 
practice three in full pads <laughs> to the fourth practice in full pads yeah. and then we practice and then into our first scrimmage, how these guys continue to evolve. But there's some good, good older guys on, on defense and offense that have stepped up as well as some young, uh, new young guys also. Yeah, and it's amazing. A lot of guys can get pumped for that first practice and fall pads, but who's going to be pumped practice 12? You right. know, when you're tired and you're beat up and you've been in the training room. But my last question, we're here with Coach Shane Beamer, uh, head football coach at the South Carolina Gamecocks. A lot of positive buzz in Columbia. Excited to see him, you know, do his thing. You know, when you share a state, obviously, with Clemson and you look at the success that they've had, uh, but you guys can be right there with them and you have the ability. How excited are you for that fight? Because uh, some people will shy away from that fight. But I know the type guy you are, the type man you are, the type uh, man you're going to turn your players into. How excited are you about that challenge? Because all it takes is a little bit of momentum and the narrative and the script can change. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I mean, you want to compete against the best. If, if you're a competitor, you want to go against the best when they're at their best. And uh, certainly they're, they've done a fantastic job since I was here before. When I was here before, we had it was the – I think the season I left my last year at Carolina, that was the second year in a row of uh, starting a five game winning streak against them. Yeah. And obviously the tables have turned uh, since then, but you know, it, it's two, it, it's two great programs in my opinion in this mm -hmm. state. And, and when it's great for the state of South Carolina, when both of us are competing and playing at a high level and we've got to do our part, they're certainly doing their part as well right now. And, and I uh, got great respect for, for Coach Sweeney and what's, what he's about and his staff. And, and he's been a great resource and friend to me throughout my career. Yeah. Uh, we were assistant coaches. He at Clemson, me at South Carolina back when mm -hmm. in 2007, eight and nine before. Recruiting battles, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. It, uh, I'm excited, but no, as a competitor, you want to go against the best and, and they're right up there at the yeah. top right now. And I'm eager to go in there and compete with them uh, in recruiting and on the football field. Yeah. Well, coach, I appreciate your time. And I know you're going to have success because you care about your guys and, and it's not just about scoring points. And that's the difference in recruiting. That's, that's the difference on fourth and one. And I know you and your staff are really excited, man. I really appreciate you coming on. I know you're busy. Best of luck to you. Hope to get you back on again. Uh, and, you know, spurs up, man. I know you guys are doing your thing out there and uh, going to be keeping an eye on you. And like I said, I really appreciate your time, Coach. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on. We got to do it again soon. Go game hey, Definitely. Appreciate you guys joining us. Head to thejboyshow.com. Get some merch. Subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It's the J-Boy Show with head coach Shane Beamer. Keep an eye on this guy. Beamer balls back, baby, and it's in <laughs> Columbia. It's been another episode of the J-Boy Show. The J-Boy's going, going, gone. The J-Boy Show is produced by David Cohn, Technical Director Dave Hammock. Creative Director, David Culbertson. Audio Engineer, Faison Sharif. Production Assistants, Blaine Crane and Kyle Orr. Executive Producers, Jake Crane, Vince Thompson, Steve Chamberlain, and David Cohn. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website, thejboyshow.com, for updates regarding our newest apparel and merch designs. Win the water cooler with The J-Boy Show.